How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to 603 Bass. This is a short version of our top five fall baits for smallmouth bass. We recently did a longer show on this for our weekly live stream called Real Northern Bass Talk. Now we're going to give you the really, really short, short version for those that are interested in watching a two-hour live segment, although we really do hope you tune into that every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Now, this is a top five list, but we're not doing it specifically. This is our number one. This is our number two. This is number three. With smallmouth, they're very fickle creatures. Any one of these could be your number one. And any one of these that would be number one one day or even that morning could be your number five the next day or even that afternoon. Their preference can shift from day to day and even hour to hour. So bear that in mind as we go through our top five because, again, one more time to repeat it, what we say is number one isn't always necessarily number one. Without further ado, first thing on the list, jigs. Jigs. We keep it simple. When we're talking about smallmouth, vast majority of the time, or fishing football jigs. I will more often than not default to using a finesse jig style. We're talking like two aught or three aught hooks, half ounce or three eighths ounce footballs, more finesse presentations of the skirts, whether it's a lower strand count or a shorter skirt. And then you also have things like this from Beast Coast, which you can show off, sir, which is the finesse hybrid jig called the Hustler. It's got a little bit of everything. It's got marabou hair, it's got a finesse skirt. But any one of these with a myriad number of trailers is one of absolutely the best baits and should absolutely be in your top five when we're talking about fishing for smallmouth in the fall. Fishing jigs in the fall, we typically go with a trailer that has a lot of action on the fall. This past year, the two trailers that we've had the most luck with on our jigs have been the Beast Coast Flip and Delight and the Strike King Rage Craw. Those two trailers have plenty of action to attract those smallmouth on the fall. And when they hit the bottom, they stick straight up. So you get the fall with a lot of action, and as soon as they hit the bottom, they stick straight up. Those, those fish will come right over, look down, and then it'll just be sitting there waiting to be eaten. Aside from those two jig trailers, you can really use your imagination as to what you want to use. Listen to what the fish are trying to tell you. There's a lot to be said about how they're biting it. If you're constantly getting short strikes, maybe you need to pick something that's either a little bit shorter or has either more or less action. But when it comes to smallmouth, you really have to be willing to make fine adjustments to make the most out of your opportunities out in the water. And number two on our list would be the Demiki rig. The Demiki rig is pretty simple. It's a jig head with a 90-degree line tie with a swim bait. And that's all it is. The magic behind a Demiki rig is in its simplicity for both having either a swim bait or any sort of minnow-type trailer on it but its ability to be dropped down and suspend over suspended smallmouth. This is where something like this really shines. And while electronics certainly are not absolutely necessary to be able to fish this effectively, it does make a huge difference in how effective it can be. What I will say, if you're going to fish a Demiki rig, what you're waiting for is to see fish going by below you, relatively deep water, and you drop this over their head. Not to the fish, keep it above their head. Where it really shines is if you can keep it perfectly flat in the water column. You don't want to dip and butt down. And I mean, you probably can't get it to do this anyway because just the nature of the head and everything, but you don't want it to sit straight up. You want it to sit and look like a minnow that's just kind of hanging out, doing absolutely nothing. And if you can use something, say like the Magic Click from Beast Coast Fishing or say a Fluke or tiny swim baits like the Mega Bass Haze Dong, anything that doesn't really want to completely flop over like this when it's sitting dead still, that is where this bait excels. Bring it down to within, say, 5 to 10 feet above their heads and just dead stick it. You can get a little bit fancy with it and you can add just a little shimmy to it. At the same time, you can start to raise it or you can do one or the other of those two things. But more often than not, the fish are coming up to it. You can see them on your graph, just with regular traditional 2D sonar. If they're coming up to the bait but not closing that distance and they might keep coming up but never actually seeing the line of the fish blend with your bait, then more often than not, it's going to be a color change. So be prepared to have several different colors to throw at them. Try to mimic the bait that are in the lake. Start from there. This is a bait that excels when doing nothing. Don't overwork it. Number three on our list, jerk baits. And there's a whole different host of jerk baits you can throw out there. But regardless, a jerk bait is definitely a very, very hard bait to beat when you're talking about fall fishing for smallmouth. Jerk baits in the fall for smallmouth is probably one of the most fun ways to catch them. You can work this a lot more aggressively and with less pausing, so it's almost a constant twitch, 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 pause. 
Twitch, 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 pause. We've had days where we're out over 35, 40 feet of water, and this bait, this is just a regular Vision 110, a, th- a smallmouth will come up from the bottom and eat this. So don't be afraid to throw this over deep water at all. And as the water gets colder, you're going to want to slow down your cadence. The colder it gets, like, let's say right now, probably about a two to three second pause, five to seven twitches. When the water gets super cold, like almost ice in, you can sit there for 30 seconds to a minute without moving it before it'll get bit after only two or three twitches. So always change your cadence because you never know what they're going to bite that day. And number four on our list for our best five smallmouth baits for the fall is topwater. The fall topwater bite for smallmouth is absolutely one of my favorite bites that I can come across. And it doesn't always happen often for me or as consistently as I would like, but it's there often enough that I will always have a topwater tied on when we're talking about fall fishing for smallmouth. I'm a simple man. I keep it just down to about two baits, and that does the bulk of my damage when we're talking about topwater. I like a spook, about mid-sized for it. I keep my colors really simple. I either throw bone white or something like a kind of sexy shad color where it's got a chrome belly or something like an orange belly. Sometimes it depends on what's the main forge in your body of water. If you happen to have a yellow, a lot of yellow perch that tend to have a much more prominent orange on the underside of them, it's hard to beat a bait that has an orange underside. Otherwise, if you have things more like alewife or smelt, then going with something like just a bone white or a chrome belly tends to be a lot better for me in those instances. Where I really like to throw these, as the water cools down and all these fish move out from that deeper water into those shallower water transitions where you would say if you got a big deep glacial lake and you've got plenty of 50, 60 foot areas where the fish like to be in midsummer and they pull back up to say 20 feet, they're moving back to that transition between deep and shallow, working over the top of that early in the day or even late in the day has been very consistent for me when we're talking about top water. And you can even keep it as simple as throwing something like a popper. Any of these will work, bomb it out, wait for your ripples to dissipate, and then just do a nice, steady, slow walking retrieve, work in, pauses anywhere from 5 to 10 seconds, and repeat. That, more often than not, will get you bit, but as always with everything else, make adjustments as needed. If anything, always opt to slow down more than you will do speed up. Usually going slower is your best bet for success. Last but not least, number five, we're going to talk about one of three things. Okashira Screwhead from Mega Bass, Spy Baits, and Underspins of Swim Baits. Well, we'll start out with the Okashira Screwhead. The Okashira Screwhead is basically a jig head with a little prop on it. One is bigger than the other. With them being different sizes, this thing does a little bit of a, a swimming action towards you which makes the swim bait trailer that you would put on this have just a natural... (laughs) This, the way that I fish this, if there's suspended fish, if the fish are suspending in 30 feet, drop this down to roughly 30 feet or above them if you can, and just slow roll this back. When I say slow roll, I mean just slow roll it back. This thing being down so deep, if you start reeling it in, Too fast, this will just come up and it'll be out of the strike zone instantly. Another great bait for suspended smallmouth when you're starting to work into that early fall, the spy bait. It's it's like the Okashira, but it's a hard bait. There's a prop in the prop in the rear and there's a prop in the front. Same thing. You see those suspended smallmouth? Long, long cast. Let this thing sink down. Count it down to however depth you need it to be. Same thing. Just slow roll it back. You can work this along banks. You can work it over flats. You can work it over super deep water. These things are just phenomenal baits. Last but not least, going along that same realm of, we'll say, moving baits in that middle water column is something as simple as an underspin with a swim bait on the back. What you can use for a swim bait on an underspin is entirely up to you. There's almost no wrong answer to this. I will say, though, I try to keep it about four inches or less, depending upon the hook shank size. Kitech Easy Shiners, Mega Bass Spark Shads, Mega Bass Haze Dongs, or even the Kitech Swing Impact Fats. All of those are phenomenal baits to throw on the back of an underspin. This is a bigger, flashier, 
easier to see presentation compared to say the Okahira, Okashira screwhead and a spy bait for working that mid water column for something that you want to always constantly be moving. You can get them in a whole host of different sizes depending upon how fast or slow you want to be able to move it while maintaining a consistent depth down in the water column. If you're consistently marking say bait 20 feet down and bigger marks that will most likely be smallmouth anywhere from 30 feet down or a little bit deeper, I'll take something like this and I will get just below the bait and I will swim it back as slow as I need to to maintain that depth. And if none of these five baits tickle your fancy, there are a few other honorable mentions that we have listed, but that's in the full video that we just recorded. So go check us out at youtube.com slash 603bass every Wednesday at 8 p.m. And we go through literally everything. We go through, we got people come on for, for jerk baits, jigs, we got shows for electronics, everything. Everything you could ever think about fishing, bass fishing specifically, we cover. If you found this helpful at all, like the videos, subscribe to the channel, and comment on anything that you want. Thank you very much for watching this, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.